salute, salute, salute. It's your boy T-Bone Blast on the check-in with the fourth edition of Talking That Walk. Salute to all the real, man. Um, It's been a while since I did this, you know what I mean? Probably like about at least three weeks to a month. And for the life of me, man, I salute all those brothers who got platforms that's able to do what they do on a daily or every few days or even weekly. I don't know. I can't seem to get on board consistently with this shit. So um, I'm here now. And um, from with the title, I'm talking about enemies or rather friends that became enemies. Before I get into that story, let me first say, um, because a few of the comrades, very few, most dig what I'm doing, but very few, like, yo, Blast, yo, you know, you know, why you, you know, with the YouTube thing, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man, like, real shit, you know, I, I addressed it, you know, personally to anybody that acquired, but now I'm going to do it publicly. Um, I got over 20 years in the system. Seven and then 15. Not counting a little DFY shit. That's like literally like half my life. It's impossible, like literally, for me to just act like it never happened. Like, it's literally a part of my history. My it's, it's there for a large portion of my life, half, literally. And I saw a lot. I endured a lot. And I made it through. I'm not glorifying shit. When I get up here with these stories... Keeping official with you, with y'all, it's kind of like therapeutic. I'm living my best life right now. But just because I am doesn't mean that I just, the, my what I've been through can just be erased. Like it just never happened. My ride was strenuous, y'all. So when I get up here, it's not meant to glorify. You know what I mean? What you going to get when you hear these stories, if you've never been through this shit, it's going to do two things for you. It's either going to prevent you from making the same mistakes I made, have you thinking twice about doing the dumb shit, that way you won't have to experience it. So it's going to prevent you or either it's going to prepare you. If you still choose to do what you do, maybe my stories will help you know what to do in the event that you get caught up in whatever it is you're doing. So in one way or the other, it's going to learn you. While at the same time, as I said, it's therapeutic for me. Um, but for the most part, you know, the, 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 the ill side to this shit is, you know, the disrespect. You know, people use this platform, the disrespect. And I wouldn't be shocked if a, a shot come my way. It just seems to be the name of the game. You know what I mean? As my boy Batman said, you know, ain't no smut on my name, so I ain't worried about a thing. Salute to my bro Batman, man. And by the way, that interview that him and Jai Ace did, fire. Salute to Jai Ace. I'm looking forward to their sequel, Batman and Robin together. That's going to be good. But I put that interview in like my top three. Him, that one and the two that Ron Do did. Official, just straight, saying it like it is. Not pulling no punches. That's how we do it in Brownville. 
But when you hear my stories, you're not going to hear no cap. If I don't know, I'm going to say I don't know. But I try not to speak on shit that I don't know unless it's necessary for the story. But I will say I don't know. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? But so like I said, this shit is therapeutic. But at the same time, we we all getting some out of it. If you already been through it, then even if you just getting entertainment out of it, it is what it is. You getting something out of it. So with that said, let me get into this shit because um um from friends to foes, from friends to enemies. That's what we're gonna talk about. Not only are we gonna talk about it, I'ma give y'all three different stories in regards to this topic. Everybody know of friends that have fallouts. I loan you some money, you take a loan to pay me back. Stupid shit. I ain't fucking with you no more. I ain't talk about that type of fool. I'm not talking about that type of shit. Originally, I was going to say the title was going to be friends having fallouts or some shit like that. But that shit is like lightweight compared to the shit that I'm going to get into. So I just call it what it is from friends to enemies. Straight on sight. We used at one time I would slit somebody throat for you. Now I'm trying to slit your throat. That type of shit. You know what I mean? Not no regular fallout shit. Everybody either know of some shit like that or been through some shit like that. You know what I mean? And in the street, it could get deadly because if you was close with that person, y'all know where each other rest at. You know what I mean? But you know, at the but also you got more more room to breathe. You got more room to strategize, or even if you choose to run, you could do that too. You know what I mean? But when you in the can on that type of time and y'all in the same spot, it's kind of hard to just like act like y'all don't see one or get out of each other way. And this is where shit get nasty at. I know of like quite a few, but I, I of, of incidents like this. But these three stories that I'm about to tell y'all, two of them I'm indirectly involved. You know, like you can't even tell them stories without my name being in it. I'm just not one of the participants. So that's the only reason why I'm telling them to out of all the ones that I know that I had really nothing to do with. And then I got one where I, I'm actually one of the parties. So I'm going to shield three of that, three of those with y'all. Again, welcome to Talking That Walk, episode four. T-Bone Blast on the check-in. Let's get it. Let's get to it. Check it. The first one I'm going to talk about involve two individuals by the name of Happy from out of Bushwick, Brooklyn, and another individual by the name of Trouble out the Bronx, but what I hear, they call him Checkmate now. You know what I mean? But I never seen him as Checkmate. You know what I mean? I, I never, you know, bumped into him since that became his name. But that's what I heard his name is now. But his name was Trouble, so that's what I'm going to address him as in this story from out the Bronx. Um, Happy and Trouble. First of all, they both was Muslim. Like a lot of other dudes back then, they don't just be wanting to say that part of their history. You know what I mean? They want to start from the part where, you know what I mean? But they both was Muslim. For whatever reason, that's on them. But I said in one of my episodes, I believe it was episode two, I believe, in the, the Brooklyn versus Muslim War, where I mentioned their two names where they um they cut together, they, they cut three individuals while they were asleep. I'm going back to 1994, C-74, Rikers Island, adolescent building. We all adolescents. The Brooklyn and Muslim War was at kind of at full swing at this point. These two dudes who had no names at the time decided 
to cut three Brooklyn dudes while they were asleep. One of them turned out to be from Queens, though, but he got hit because they thought he was from Brooklyn. So let me say this first. I don't one of three stories that I'm about to share with y'all, I'm going to start from the friendship part, and then I'm going to go to the fallout part. So at the, when I'm talking this happy and trouble shit, I'm giving y'all the friendship part. You know what I mean? So they was like, they was Muslim brothers. They made a significant movie together. They went to the one main being together, or one lower being together. They went to HDM being together. And they was like inseparable. Trouble, happy, happy, trouble. All right. So now, in the midst of this, the situation with me and germs happened. Y'all be thirsty for me to get into that story. I might. Later on down the line, I might. But right now, I'm not going to give details on that because I don't want to take away from this story. But that story has something to do with this story. So that's why I even mentioned it. So the shit happened with me and Germs. You know what I mean? I shot him. And um, he went to HDM Bing. And meanwhile, Trouble... And happy was over there. Germs was Muslim too. A lot of people don't know that. All of them, a lot of them dudes was Muslim at first, right? So he was Muslim. So he went over there to HDM Bing. So I guess they all got cool with each other and shit like that. But it was more happy and trouble. That I had a lot of days in the Bing too. But I, as I explained in one of the stories, every time time they came to get me. It was a CO broad that was dead to move. So I would be in one main bang with a thousand days, right? So all them dudes is over there in HDM bang. Finally, I, you know, me and Wise, I'm going to get into that story one day too. That's a salute to Wise Red. Me and him, um, I end up airing something out. He held the motherfucker while I aired the motherfucker out. So the four building got tired of my shit. The president of the United States couldn't have stopped this move. So they moved me to HDM Bing finally. So when I go to HDM Bing, I went with this Spanish kid. And um, I remember when we was getting strip searched. I don't know how somebody seen me, but I just know from, the, from where the CEO was strip searching me and this kid, you can hear people saying, T-Bone here. Yo, T-Bone here. Like, real shit. It got to the point where the police was looking like, which one of y'all name is T-Bone? Like, me and the kid looking at each other like, we both know I'm T-Bone, but we not saying nothing. So he's like, T-Bone here. Like, all of them like, because, you know, I guess, you know, remember, I shot germs. He didn't get me back yet at this time. You know what I'm saying? So um, he over there, S.I. over there. You had, he on the side with S.I., um, Low Junglist, that's Curtis. Um, who else is over there? Ike, C Diamonds. Um, I already said, yeah, so he got a, um, like I said, S Fulo. They got a little mob over there, you know what I mean? They on that side, though. They put me on one side. I didn't even know which side they was going to put me on at this time. But you hear mad people screaming my name. So when the police finish doing what they do, I'm walking up the gallery. They put me in the, just so happened, I'm in the cell all the way in the end. So I got to pass all these motherfucker cells. So I'm catching motherfuckers screaming through the vent that I'm here. Like, so me, I'm like, yeah, I'm in the motherfucking building. I'm talking my shit while I'm walking. Because every, I know everybody know who I am at this point. You know what I mean? Yo, yeah, I'm, t I'm coming through. I'm walking down the gallery looking at everybody's cell like, yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, boom. I had this rug cut it. I swear to God, that shit was like six inches fucking long, yo. That shit was like a knife. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so I'm coming through. I already knew germs was dead. 
but I hear people calling this motherfucker, putting him on point. Yo, George, yo, T-Boy, yeah, like I stopped in front of a couple, any cell I stopped in front, I swear to God, when they saw me there, they, they stopped screaming. You know what I mean? <laughs> yo, I'm not capping, I swear to God. You know what I mean? I came through there on some real, like I'm in a building, I'm screaming down the gallery as I'm walking down the gallery all the way to my cell. So I'm in my spot. So now, the next day come. So you got happy there. I don't know happy, trouble. There ain't nobody at this time. You know what I mean? But I could tell that germs, because I was like two cells away from this kid named Lecturer. I knew Lecturer already. You know what I mean? Rail from Fort Greene, he was there at that time, but he was like down. He was like in the middle. You know what I'm saying? So, But Lecturer was like two cells from me. So I'm, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He giving me the rundown. I'm like, what's he say? Yo, some of the Muslim dudes. Now, mind you, all them dudes is Muslim. So he telling me who's who and all that. So I'm like, where this dude germ? He they wasn't even calling them germs at this time. That shit came like later on. I didn't even know that was him. His name was Straight Ferguson. His last name, Ferguson, that's what he was called. So I'm like, yo, where's Ferguson at? You know what I mean? He was like, yo, he's, what's Sally in? He said, he's on the other side. In fact, it's crazy. I was in 23 cell. Lecture was in 26 cell, which I think is the last cell in 1B. You know what I mean? Germs was in 23 cell on the other side of me. I don't know this at this time. Mind you, this is my first day there. So I, he tell me how the yard goes. So the very next day, he said, we don't go to the yard with them. But I heard all the motherfuckers screaming. So I said, I'm coming outside. I'm about to air some shit out. And somebody trying to call me. I'm about to air some shit out. I already know that's what I'm doing. I'm not even coming to talk to nobody. I'm coming to air some shit out. You know what I mean? All you motherfuckers were screaming while I was in the back. All right. Boom. So just so happened the very next day. Now I got this long ass rug. I exaggerated with the six inches, but that shit was like nice size shit. I ain't break that shit or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So when I came outside the next morning, I didn't even make it to the yard. I fucking went through that mag. They had some shit that 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 um caught my rug. Like it didn't catch it, but I couldn't clear it. And they wouldn't let me go to the yard. It got to the point where I was about, they was like, yo, give up what you got and you could go to the yard. It got to the point I was so thirsty to go to the yard. I was ready to give up the ratchet because I knew Rail and all of them was outside. One of the motherfuckers got a ratchet, but I ain't want to depend on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nah, I ain't got nothing, man. And they sent me back to my cell. I'm super tight. Like I just got there that day before that I'm trying to go to the yard and I don't go. I like, I was thinking about that shit all night. I said, I'm gonna crush one of these motherfuckers in that yard. Whoa. So I couldn't even go to the yard. I'm tight. All right, cool. Just so happened, they used to have adult suicide aides coming down there. So there's one adult suicide aide. <coughs> I said, yo, man, I need a ratchet I can clear the mag with. I got this shit. I ain't going to front. He beat me. He gave me this little ass gem star. I gave him the rug for the gem star. He was supposed to bring me another one. Sucker never came back. But he gave me a little shit. But I was like, fuck it. I'm just happy. I can work with this shit. That shit was, you know, sharp and all that. Because I'm already got it in my mind. I'm a tear one. I'm, I want to send a message to this dude. Like, because dude was like, yo... How T Bone ain't coming to HDM Bing. I mean, I'm shooting shit over there. How he ain't everybody else coming to HDM Bing? But as I explained earlier, they just, when my number played, had somebody that would be like, and it wasn't by two, but it was, you know, yo, nah, he ain't going. I'm in one main. That's my crib. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, all right, it is what it is. So now I'm in a building. That's another reason why I came down the gallery the way that I did. You know what I mean? So I wanted to make a statement on the entry level. And then in the yard, I'm going to air one of these motherfuckers out. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't make the yard the first time. So the second time, the next day, now I got this fucking gem. And the shit is broken down. It's slim. I was like, fuck it. I made it to the yard with the shit. I kid you not. As soon as I went to the yard, I don't know why I zeroed in on trouble, but I walked directly into him. 
He threw his hands up. He was like, yo. Like he, I didn't even come to him on no, like I said, what up the rail. You know what I mean? I ain't even give him no conversation. I just nodded my, because like I said, I wasn't coming to talk. I was coming to make a statement. He threw his hands up. I like, I don't know why I went to him. I didn't even know he was one of the dudes that cut the three dudes while they were asleep. I didn't know him or happy. I just heard about it. When we got cool, I'm like, oh, y'all the ones that did that shit? Because they wasn't like that at that time. Nobody, it was just something that happened. Like, even the dudes that got cut, I ain't even know them. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, so Trouble threw up his hands like, yo, son, nah, it ain't even like that. I got something to show you when we get back. He the one that told me that, yo, you in 23 cell, son is in 23 cell behind you. You know what I mean? I'm like, where are you? Like, yeah, he probably listened to you talk or whatever the case may be. He's right behind you through the vent. He can hear you. He told me all that. He said, and I'm going to show you something when we get back. Now, mind you, this state Muslim brothers and shit. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm like, he try to rock me to sleep. So I go to my son, Rel. I'm telling him what happened. Rel was like, yo, them, they pussy. They don't want no issue. They don't want no action like that, son. They, they not like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all this yelling and shit. You know what I'm saying? Boom. But they ain't, it, it, I, it was like, it was like so peaceful when I came in. It, it, it was what it was. So I traded my motherfucking ratchet for nothing. You know what I mean? But anyway, so now, make a long story short. <laughs> so now I go back to my cell. That day, Trouble sends me a kite. It's a kite that Germs sent him. So Trouble wrote a little kite, but he's like, yo, this is the kite he sent me. So I'm reading this shit. And it says something to the effect of, yo, you know, he got me. He shot me before, whatever. Yo, just... He wanted basically trouble to get dudes to get at me. Or at least do something where I can go on the other side. Like, he wanted dudes to get at me. He tried to send a missile with the Muslim brothers. But they ain't jacket. When the way I came in, it would have... Yo, I ain't real front. Like, I was so looking for action. Like, I wanted a reason. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't give a fuck about if police was there. I didn't care about getting caught. I didn't think about no new charge. I was just waiting for the first motherfucker to get out of line. I didn't give a fuck about nothing. I don't know if that's what they saw, but they didn't they didn't act, they didn't even give me a slight sign. The only thing that they sign they gave me is when I was in that motherfucking shit getting processed and I'm walking up and I caught a couple of motherfuckers calling my name, yelling to the vent to the other side, letting him know that I was there. That's it. But none of that was when we went to the yard that two days later, because I didn't get the next day. I ain't hear none of that. You know what I mean? So, in trouble, he gives me the kite. So, by this time, me and Germs is gate banging through the vent on some adolescent shit. And I'm like, yo, you can't even send a hit right. So, now he know that trouble let me know what was happening because he's hitting trouble like, yo, son, what's up? Because a couple of days passing. He don't know I know. Trouble was telling me. So, now, when, you know, um, germs used to go by my cell. One time he had to go by my cell to go to the yard. So one time, you know what I mean? I think he spit at me or Curtis spit at me or some shit when they was going to the yard. So the next day I had a piss bottle. So when he walked by, I pissed. Shh. Then the next day I had my sheet up. He, I'm acting like my sheet up. He walked by, psh, psh. you know what I'm saying? Boom. Then one day I ain't going to front that side. You know, he was in the yard, but from my cell, I'm in 23 cell. The door's right there. He was like, yo, son, y'all, you know what I mean? Y'all got to stop doing that, pissing and shitting. Don't, don't you know, spit me. Just, you know, when y'all see each other, y'all see each other. And, you know, on some grown man shit, even though we was adolescents. And that's just the way it was. You know what I mean? So we just left it alone. All that shit stopped. But now... In the midst of that, damn, this story is longer than I anticipated it to be. You know what I mean? I hope I could get all three stories off. But anyway, in the midst of that, motherfucking, um, now, nothing ended up happening with me and these dudes. In fact, we all became cool. Now, again, trouble and happy. They was both down there. They was neighbors. They was peoples. You know what I mean? I remember, now, this is what fucks shit up. One day, dudes is catching wreck on the gallery. They throwing 
they throwing fire, smoke, like to all the way to two in the morning. It got to the point where the police cracked everybody out they sell and put us all in the receiver room because it was smoky. It was crazy, dudes. And this is a day like my section was clean. My section was good money. We didn't do nothing. Me lecture. I forgot who else was back there with us in that four cage. It was like four cages in the back of the cells. Yo, we didn't do nothing. I was just like, yo, them dudes is bugging. You know, happy, trouble, all of them. They wilding. So now, um, 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 they put us in it because dudes was literally choking. So they got two black pens. They got three bull pens. It was so many blacks that they put two black, uh, black pens, a uh, black pens, and they had one Spanish pens. You know what I mean? I guess everybody know why they did it like that. But it was this one Spanish kid. I never forget him. His name was Brown Eyes. But he looked like he was black. And they fucked up and put him in the black pens. Not the pens that I was in. The pens I was in, it was me. I remember Rail. It was a couple of dudes that was in the pens I was in. The other pens had Happy, Trouble, um, this kid named G Money from Harlem. Um, they was all in that pens. So now what happened was Brown Eyes and Happy was cool with each other. You know what I'm saying? So so Happy wasn't trying to let nothing happen to Brown Eyes. You know, I'm in the other bullpens, after that shit up. Like, you gonna let that motherfucker, uh, y'all gonna let that motherfucker. And Brown Eyes was Latin King. He was Latin King. You know what I mean? It's, it's rare you get this opportunity to get one of them. They in the pens with y'all. You serious? But Happy was like, nah, we ain't doing that over here, boom, boom. So G Money was trying to get past Happy to get him. You know what Happy did? Happy shoots G Money. Get them out the pens. So now when Happy and G Money leaves the pens, that's the first shooting. Trouble, Happy um, um, Brown Eyes is like, yo, I already know y'all going to cut me. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. Now, I've seen a motherfucker cut itself before. Um, <laughs> but I'm talking about this shit is crazy. He said, just don't cut me in my face. He lift his motherfucking shirt up like this. And this dude happy. I mean, not happy. Trouble, who was still in the pens, took the razor and went mad because there's nobody to save him now. Happy gone. And mad slowed down his chest all the way to his stomach. That shit was just open. I'm sitting there looking at this shit. Son is holding his shirt up like, eh, eh, like he and trouble just going real slow. And that shit just open and open. I'm like, oh, and he only had a box cutter, a regular, regular gym star. You know what I'm saying? Son had a scar this long and this wide because some and some were just holding like, Ugh! you know what I mean? So now police come in the pens. Now that's two motherfuckers cut. So now you know how them HDM police, it's like three in the morning. They like these motherfuckers think it's something sweet. You know what I mean? So they took, now they took brown eyes and trouble out the pens. So now the regular remaining dudes, so now the police go in there and pull dudes out one by one and start beating the fuck out these motherfuckers. Know what I'm saying? One by one. <laughs> right now, my pins, I'm thinking we good. Ain't nothing happening in my pins. We in my pins chilling. Two shootings and both of them shits happened in that pins. You know what I'm saying? They fucked them. They won, but it was this one kid named Little Vicious. Little Vicious. Little Jamaican kid. He a little young kid at the time. I already started, he got his weight up over the years later on down the line, but then he was a little motherfucker. And he was getting his ass whipped by the police this day. He was like, blood, blood, bum, bum, blood. Why they whipping his ass? So they every time they whip one of them out, they went and put them back in their pens. They put them in our pens. So when they let vicious, I'm sitting on a bitch. Motherfucker come literally laying on my lap like, yo, keep on them beat me. So I'm, I start laughing. I'm not laughing because he got his ass whipped with the, his accent. Like that shit. A couple of dudes start laughing. Police want to call me. Oh, you think it's something funny? Make a long story short. Like, I, I don't want to get in too much into that story. I got my ass whipped that day, too. They fucked me up. I fought back. I got whipped out the worst in that one. Word. But anyway, fuck all that. So now, 
So now because, mind you, happy cut G money, trouble cut brown eyes. So now, now you, them two is, they peoples. They the best friends down there as far as them two. So because they both got, they both cut something, they both went on the other side with SI, Germs, Curtis, C Diamonds, Fulo, Ike, all the motherfuckers over there. You know what I'm saying? They went on them dude's side, them two. So now, <laughs> by this time, mind you, Germs already know. That this motherfucker put me on point. He mad at both of them because I'm over there. They supposed to be his Muslim brothers. They know I shot them. They ain't try to bring. In fact, you know, in HDM back then, if you in the law library, adolescent law library, you could see the yard. They never put both our sides together. They put my side in the yard and put them in the law library or either vice versa. So if you in the law library, you could look out and see the yard. In a, in, but from the yard, you can't really see in the law library, but you could talk to a motherfucker. Like, you could talk. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So now, mind you, happy and trouble because they cut something the night before. They both went to HDM. I mean, excuse me, the other side of where we was at, 1B. So now... The very next day, we go to the lower library. That side is in the yard. I see happy. I see trouble. I see germs. I forgot who else was out there. I, I think it was um maybe C Diamonds or somebody out there. I forgot. I'm not sure. But I remember seeing them three. Happy doing a little bullshit pull-ups. Germs is walking around the yard playing with a dead basketball, throwing the shit up in the air, catching it, throwing it up in the air, catching it. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, he knows that I'm in the little library. He, he knows I'm watching. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. Trouble. He's on the little library window. He's in the yard talking to us. Me, Rail, whoever else. Mind you, he just left us. He became my son. So he's talking to me, and that's my word. I made a joke. I was joking when I said it, because I'm thinking they all Muslim brothers, too. I'm like, yo, you better be on point. That motherfucker, that motherfucker behind you, he, he said, come on, man. That shit ain't nothing. That's my man. Yo, I swear to God. So, but I threw that out there, because I know me. You ain't going to be, nah. You're like, you going to put a dude on that. I'm, nah, I'm going to air your ass out. But he relied on that Muslim shit. They all Muslim, mind you. So, a <laughs> couple of minutes went by. All I know, I'm, I ain't even, I, don't, I know I ain't doing law work. I'm in there kicking it or whatever. You hear people say, oh, shit, I turn, look in the window. Germs in this motherfucker trouble out. Ah, ah. He in this shit out. At the same time, remember, I said happy on a pull-up bar. Happy stands his feet. You know with a dip bar, the dip part? He, his feet is on a dip bar, which means he's all the way up in the air. While his man is getting shot, Happy is on top of the dip bar, fucking hitting his hand. You see, he got a ratchet hitting his hand like he's trying to get the ratchet out. Germ stopped shooting trouble and ran at Happy. Germ swung at Happy legs like, because mind you, Happy is standing on top of the fucking dip bar. He's standing on top of the dip bar. You know what I mean? That little shit that, you know, the pull-up bar. He's holding on to the pull-up bar, but his feet is on the dip part. And 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 germs, yeah, and that shit was kind of high. So germs swinging at him. He swung at him like three or four times, like at his legs or something. Happy just moved his legs out the way. To me, it looked like a setup. I, I ain't saying it was. I don't, you know, later on down the line, I, I heard that it wasn't. But for Happy to be up there at that time, that was like, yo, he had to nah. Because that's his right-hand man. Germs in him out. You got a ratchet. You man, he 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 just doing this the whole time. Even when germs swung like three or four weak swings at his legs, and germs went back to trouble and started hitting him again. Trouble just sitting there. And I'm we looking at this shit in the Lord from the Lord Library. He knows I'm watching. You know what I mean? He knows we all watching. You know what I mean? So then they take him out the yard or whatever. They took trouble out the yard. They took happy out the yard. You know what I'm saying? Boom. 
So now, I don't even remember what happened to Happy and Trouble after that. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember, be honest with you. But I do know that because of that incident, them two dudes never was the same again. They didn't, they wasn't, you know, it, it, I didn't even know they had beef though. That's the crazy shit. So let's fast forward this shit two years later. We in Attica. We in Attica. Me in trouble in Attica already. And we that incident came up. And he was like, yo, when I catch this motherfucker happy, you know what I mean? I'm going to AM out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm like, where? He's like, yo, he let me get cut. He was standing right there. And he ain't do nothing. And you know how they say when you talk about a motherfucker, man, you talk him up. Guess who pulled up at the fucking spot? Happy. <laughs> I swear to God, no sooner did he said this, a week later, Happy pulls up to the spot. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. I guess, I, and then I saw them talking. I remember thinking to myself, like, all that shit trouble was talking. All right, cool. I ain't think nothing more of it. In fact, you know, I don't like to see my four building dudes get it on with each other. We was in a four building together. Now we in the mountains with all these motherfuckers that been down 10, 20, 30 years. Like, <laughs> we, we like a motherfucking, we, we, this is our class. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But I understand why trouble would be tight. But what I don't understand is why he hesitating pulling the trigger. If you want to pull the trigger, pull the trigger. But instead, Happy end up tearing trouble ass up. Word. Friends that became foes. Let's get into this next story. Um, the next story involves Papa Jock and Benji. <sighs> Two Spanish motherfuckers that's Wild. That's off the meter. Benji is from the Bronx. Papa Jock is from Brownville, Brooklyn. Me and Papa Jock got a bond. Me and Benji developed a little bond, but never as close as me and Papa Jock. The two, like, but their rides was different. Papa Jock was on some guard body shit. I, don't, I never really heard him speak Spanish, and I knew him for years. Benji, he came to jail. He was a nieta. Um, I explained in one of my stories, I think the last one, where Benji was involved in jumping somebody, but he was on some nieta shit back then. But apparently, I'm in HDM at this time. This is while I'm in HDM. He had a fallout with nietas. Over this kid named Red. I heard Red it turned Red was end up being a rat. He from Bronx slash Harlem somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And me and Red was cool. But um Red had beef with the Spanish dudes. You know what I mean? Let me refer. Me and Red was cool years then. I don't know about later on, you know what I mean? But anyway, he had beef with the Latin Kings and shit over whatever he had beef with. Benji was Nieta. One day they was walking through the hallways, something like that. You know what I'm saying? And and um the Nieta, the Latin Kings pressed red and Benji stood between them and they looked at him like he was a traitor. So when he was getting his hair cut, they shot him in the back of his neck. Wrong move. Cause that shit turned Benji into something else. Real shit. You know what I mean? So Benji ended up shooting one of them. He comes to HDM. I'm already there. This is around the time with all the happy trouble shit going around this time. But I'm up over there. You know what I mean? Trouble, I mean, Benji comes over there. Now, as soon as he came to the yard, I'm going to keep it real. He came to the yard the same way I came to the yard. I respected that. But he still was going to get it. Because in my mind, he's, I don't know nothing about what happened with him and Red or none of that type of shit. But immediately, he started saying what happened. Yo, he had a brand new scar on the back of his neck. He told me, he said, yo, man, fuck them. I'm, I'm eating these motherfuckers out. But I'm wondering if he rocking us to sleep. But it was somebody that came. Yo, son, it's true. Somebody came with him. 
So really, that's how Benji really first came into the fold, yo. At first, and that's only because he had a common enemy. We shooting these motherfuckers. He, he, and it's ill because he was like one of the first ones. I, you know, I ain't no Magoo at this time, but I'm talking about people that I knew personally. He was like one of the first Spanish dudes that I knew that was one of them and then turned out to be cutting one of them. So that was new to me at that time. Later on down the line, you see a lot of people jumping shit, but that was like new to me at the time. So I was like, oh, all right, you know what I'm saying? Boom. And sure enough, he was making it happen. Papa Jock, he was gunning them down too. Latin Kings, Niet Dies. He was, he from my hood. Me and Papa Jock came through. When I came back through, um, it was either late February or, or, or early March, I forgot which one, of 94. You know what I mean? Me and Papa Jock came through the same day, literally. You know what I'm saying? And we just been, that's been my bro. Like, that's the bro. Rest in peace to Papa Jock. He passed away. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? But um, that was the bro. Facts. But anyway, so um, Papa Jock. Like I said, he was airing him out. He Brooklyn. He was on his guard body shit. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Him and Benji, we all in one main bank. Him and Benji, they like this. Why? For, for starters, they both Spanish. And they both tearing up Latin Kings and the Yak guys. They used to have friendly conversations about who the realest Spanish motherfucker. Like literally, like, because they both was on their shit. I ain't gonna make this long this one a long one because you know what I mean I said I got three three to tell her. I wanna get into the next one. But um make a long story short, they was tight. They went on visits together. They both was M to Z. Like from the outside looking in, you would think they was two regular Spanish dudes. These dudes was like dudes that was on some shit. They was doing their numbers. With that, you know, gunplay shit. Facts. We all was, but it was amazing because they was doing it to Latin Kings and the Ethos, and they looked like them. You know what I mean? And they had that common ground. And they they built their friendship off that shit. You know what I'm saying? Benji wasn't blood yet. Benji was Benji was still neutral. Benji was still neutral at the time. SI turned them blood later on down the line. Benji ain't even know SI at this time yet. But then, SI and them, you know, they brought the adolescent, the rest of the adolescent, the one main being. So check it. One thing about adolescents, motherfuckers play too much. I was one of the few that really wasn't on no playful shit, like, I wasn't with all that playing shit all day long, playing dudes, throwing water on each other. I wasn't with all that, that ranking shit, that stupid shit. You know what I mean? Once in a while, a motherfucker would get me to indulge, but that, I wasn't really known to be playing. But dudes used to be playing a lot, talking about each other mothers. This is peoples, talking about each other mothers and shit. So one day, you know, Papa Jock, he showed a picture of his moms one day. You know what I'm saying? She was an older lady. So one day dudes was ranking on each other. And then Papa Jock was like, yo, man, you know what I mean? Yo, stop playing with me. He he sent me a kite. He said, yo, man, this dude Benji, keep talking. I'm going, I'm like, yo, you talking crazy. That's people. What the fuck you mean? He was like, nah, son, this dude keep playing with me. So I said, yo, just talk to him, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all peoples, man. So them two talked. It was supposed to be over. Later on down the line, like a couple of weeks later or whatever the case may be, you know, they was respecting each other. They was back to being cool. But then dudes was getting on Benji about something. And Papa Jock, all he did was laugh. And Benji was like, I know, hold up. I know I don't hear a certain individual laughing. Not that after he just pulled me up talking all this uh up, he was like, T show everybody that picture of your mom's. She looked old. She looked like a fossil. You know, that type of shit. Papa Jock was steaming. Just so happened, the very next morning, 
and Sai and all of them is in the bing by this time. They all in one main. Papa Jock went past my cell. I seen they called him for a visit. He goes past my cell. And then I see him run back past my cell. And then he runs to my cell and he throws the ratchet. And he was like, um, so he pushed it on a visit. So I took the ratchet and dude's like, yo son, Papa Jock just violated. I forgot who was in the cell in front of me, but they whispered, yo, Papa Jock just cut Benji and went on a visit. I'm like, what? So S.I. them called me, yo son, yo. Yo son, Benji wasn't blood at the time, but we all supposed to be peoples. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know that motherfucker was gonna do that shit. He cut Benji. Benji was on the gate. Papa Jock went past him and drugged him. Boom! Right down his face. That shit, Benji. Papa Jock did that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I would have talked him out of it. I would have been like, nah, son. Like, we already in the middle of a war. Like, what the fuck is you talking about? You want to do what? The same way I did the first time. I'm the one that talked him out of twisting him the first time. But... So now, a couple of weeks later, um, you know, Benji don't say who did it or nothing. But Benji, this is probably the illest way to get a motherfucker back that I ever seen in my life. It was a non-steady police working on a night tour one day. And Benji act like he pissed on himself. And he was like, yo, she yo, yeah. I pissed on myself, yo. So dude just wrecking. I'm like, oh shit, you pissed pot ass motherfucker. So police was dubbing him at first. He wanted to take a quick shower, but then the captain came and said, let him take a quick shower. It do smell crazy in there. This nigga, he must have threw piss on his gate and all that. I don't know, but they let him take a shower. So then he was like, yo, I'm done, I'm done. And his cell closed. He never was in his cell. He had a dummy in his bed like he was in the cell. Do you know this motherfucker stayed in that shower all night? Papa Jock was going to court the next morning. He knew that. And you know how if anybody been on Rikers Island knows they call you for court early in the morning. So dudes is calling Benji. He was ignoring dudes, but he he's in the shower. Dudes thinking he in his bed. We thinking he tight at us because dudes was wrecking him for pissing on himself. So we thinking he ignoring us on some bullshit. He in the shower the whole time. <coughs> so the next morning, you just hear commotion. Oh shit, oh shit. You see Papa Jock getting it on. You see this motherfucker Benji, he coming out. Motherfucker Benji, soon as Papa Jock came out his cell in that morning, Benji was on his ass. Real shit. He Benji was on his ass. He laid in that shower all night waiting for that motherfucker to come out that morning, early in the morning for court. He cut my son right on the top of his head. Whoa, son ain't even see that coming. And, um, oh, yo, some shit just hit me. I ran to the Benji years later. Me and Benji was talking about this shit. And... I'm speaking to a specific person. And if this is true, you know who I'm speaking to. Because I see you almost every day. And you the peoples. That's the crazy shit. But this shit just hit me as I'm talking about this. Me and Benji was talking about this incident. Years later. And I, you know, I'm like, how the fuck? You know what I mean? He told me that when you was giving out the breakfast... You saw him in that shower. And he told you. If you be in front of Papa Jock's cell for too long, I'm going to ear your ass out. And you went in front of Papa Jock's cell and you peoples. Benji told me, you know how you got to slide the fool under? He said that you dropped Papa Jock food and like pushed it under and got the fuck from in front of his cell just so son don't see you in front of his cell to the point where jelly spilled out and Papa Jock was like, yo, son, what the fuck? You lucky I ain't eating this shit. 
That's what Benji told me. I swear that I just now thought of that shit just now. You know I'm going to ask you about that when I see you, right? I'll probably see your ass today. If you did it like that, I understand. You know what I mean? We was kids and you didn't have no wins probably with Benji. I get it. You know what I mean? But Benji said he was watching you from the shower. He had his, he said he was watching you give out the food. And when you got the Papa Jock sale, you put that tray on that floor so fast that the fucking jelly spilt out of it and you got the fuck from in front of it just so Benji don't know that you telling him that Benji is waiting for his ass. You ain't, Benji was worried about you putting Papa Jock on point and you didn't. That's why our son came out sleeping and you was doing the breakfast around that time and I don't even know why we never put that shit together but I swear Benji told me that shit years later. But it ain't no big deal, bro. You know what I'm saying? Real shit, but <laughs> that's fucked up if that's like that. All right, but anyway, so that's what happened with that. I wonder if I got, I've been on this shit for almost an hour. 50 minutes to be exact. Hope I got time to tell this last story. The one involves me personally. Me and Jay Diamonds. Me and Jay Diamonds go back to Sparfit days. Me, I'm from Brownville. My Jay Diamonds, he from Albany Projects and Crown Heights or somewhere around that area. You know what I'm saying? Me and son was in Sparford together. We was in Brace Residential up north. That's a DFY together. We used to, we used to, we used to cause mad ruckus in Sparford together back in the days. That was my guy. You know what I'm saying? For real. That was my peoples. That was the peoples. You know what I'm saying? And and um and so me um so now we on Rikers Island. I got a little more Rikers Island experience than him. He came through like 93 or 94. I already been, you know what I'm saying? Early 94, somewhere like that. You know what I mean? I already been to the island before and all that. So, but he was embraced because, you know, he from Brooklyn. Brooklyn had shit on Smash. So he knew a couple of dudes. He was good money. Plus, he wasn't no sucker. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no sucker. So he doing his thing in his houses, the houses he in, the I'm the houses I'm in. We never landed in the same house until we both ended up in one main bank. So we both ends up in one main bank. Um, we cool. We good money. That's the people's. Like, we wasn't allowing no suicide, as I explained in one of my stories, the work there, unless they was fully with the program. If I ain't want to suicide aid there, Jay Diamonds, who was called JJ at the time, would have no problem reaching through the gate, shooting the shit out of the motherfucker. And I did the same thing. That's what we did. And we did, you had to do everything we said or you was out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I said, you know, Jay Diamonds them come up under me a little bit. You know what I mean? But son was a stand-up dude, official dude. I'm just a little older than him. So now, um, something happened. Like, we was always on the same page. But he went to HD and Bing. When he went to HD and Bing, he came back blood. As he ended up getting shot over there by a dude named, some Spanish dude named L, if I remember that name correctly. And SI ended up shooting L for shooting J Diamonds. And that's why Jay Diamonds felt, you know, I guess he felt obligated to become blood. So he became blood because SI didn't have to do that. Jay Diamonds wasn't blood. You know what I'm saying? But he still shot them, shot the dude for shooting Jay Diamonds. Who was, his name was JJ. His name wasn't Jay Diamonds until years later. So anyway, so when he got shot, he comes to H, he comes to the building. He comes to the four building. Back to one main bank. Me, I'm down there. Bree down there. My son Bree. Hamo from Albany Projects. VI from Albany, Albany Projects. May I from Far Rockaway. You had this kid named Twan from um, Red Hook. You had um, Mel from Harlem. You know what I mean? You 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 had a nice little um 
you had a nice little unit down there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was Liddy down there. Like, we was doing Papa Jock. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you had a couple of motherfuckers down there. On the other side, you had Tankhead. You had um, Lecturer. You had Lil Wise Red. You had Doggy Dog. You know what I mean? All of them was on that side. But them that side couldn't fuck with our side at all, on no level. You know what I mean? They used to have to come to us to get bud. We used to send them sticks, like, here. Yo, y'all split that. It's facts. <laughs> yeah, we was fucked up. But anyway, so Jay Diamonds, he come back to H. He come back to one main after he got cut in HDM. So I just noticed he had a little change in his attitude, like, like, we didn't seem like we was on the same page. And a couple of times I had to check him, like, who the fuck you talking to? Because he wasn't ever talking to me crazy. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't talking to me crazy now. But you know how you can hear when a motherfucker is, like, like saying shit that's kind of, like, rubbing you wrong way without saying shit? It was like that. <clears throat> and one day it came full circle. And this is why I never was one of them type of dudes that play. And this is one of the days that I did. We all on a gate catching wreck. And shit started getting serious among like two different groups of people. But we all peoples. And yeah, I forgot how it went, what it was over. So to make a long story short, JJ, you know, he told me, I said something to me. He said to me, I'm about to tell you something really erotic. Yo. Everybody shut down. Everybody got caught. It was like, a, I'm like, yo, he might as well should have got his money worth. I'm like, I'm in his ass out. <laughs> like, what? You know, like, I already sensed that he went to HDM and came back with a different attitude, but now this shit came out. So now I'm like, oh, hell no. You telling me that? All right. So the very next day, Yo, I was so tight, I couldn't even sleep that night. I couldn't wait to get out my cell. You know what I mean? So we come and we look out, our, we go to the yard the next day. But it was raining, so a lot of dudes ain't put down. I put down because I was just going to air this motherfucker out. I wasn't going, but he didn't go out. And I'm not saying he didn't go out because he was scared or nothing. It was just like, I guess he felt, because it was so much of that going around, people saying that to each other. I believe that. I mean, it's some disrespectful shit to say, but he didn't think much on it. Real shit, because he didn't come out the next day, and the way that I got it was just too easy. He wasn't even on point. Um, so, like, a couple of weeks before that, he showed me a picture of this female cousin of his. But I never gave him back the picture. I forgot to have it. I was talking to Shorty on the phone a couple of times and all that. But I never gave him the picture. I was trying to key. He just never, he ain't asked for it. I ain't never, it just never slipped my mind. So when I came out myself for wreck the next day, he didn't come out. I was like, damn, I got the gat in my hand already. I'm like, so I took the picture and put the gat under the picture. I went, I knocked on the cell. He in the bed. So I'm like, yo, man, get up, man. I'm like, yo, you violated yesterday. But he was like, yo, son. I was like, nah, nigga, you, I said, nah, you violated. Here go to your picture, man. Take your fucking picture, man. He was like, yo, man, just leave it on my gate. I said, you know that shit going fall, but when he got up, I see he had on a hoodie. It looked like he had double layers on. So I had this ratchet, so I ran to my son Bree cell. Just for just before that, Bree had this. We all had one, but Bree was already right there. That three rugs and one holster. You know what I mean? Put that shit. He gave me that shit. So I went back to Sun Cell with the picture under. By that time he was on his gate. I was like, son, you violated yesterday, bro. Fuck, tell me some shit like that. He was like, yo, son, I'm saying, so I, I put my hand through his gate. Like I was giving him the picture, and as soon as he reached for it, I just reached out, boom. I tried to get him, but I, I missed his face and shit. He came down, boom. I thought I missed him. I was like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So I went to Breeze. I was like, damn, man, he's seen it coming. I missed him. I ain't really know. I felt the shit rub against his sweater, but like I said, he was double-layered, so I thought I missed him. He, um, 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 I go to Bree's cell, I said, damn, son, then I hear him, he say, yo, V.I., yo, homo, 
yo, this is Zach Rowe, yo, this nigga. He said that just like that, yo, this nigga T-Bone just cut me. That's how I know I got him. I ain't know, I thought I missed him. I was like, oh, I got this motherfucker, all right. You know what I'm saying? Boom. So now, of course he ain't blow it up. You know what I'm saying? He went, he had to, he, you know what I mean? He went fixed up or whatever the case may be. But boy, oh boy, we gate bang from there on out. Because he ended up going up north. But before that, now I left a whole, I say he ended up going up north. Like two days later, no, like three, two days later, I give him that. Like two days later, we go on a wreck. So now he's coming out his cell, right? They burnt him for wreck like the next two days or some shit like that because they knew somebody cut him. They just didn't know who. So um, now, like two months before that, Maya and a kid named and, 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 and Tuan, from Red Hook, they had a fight on the gallery. They started in the yard. This is Peoples on Peoples. Twan washed Maya. So then when they got in the, the next day, Maya came out. Now you supposed to come out just selling your boxes and with your clothes in your hand. Maya came out fully dressed. And Twan came out in his boxes. So when they came out for wreck, Maya surprised but Maya ended up getting washed again. I gotta keep it real. Cause Twan was a tall motherfucker. But Maya tried. He went out. He ain't lose no brownie points. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, salute to Maya. I heard Twan pass. RP to him. Um, so I'm on a gate with my clothes in my hand. And while I'm waiting, I'm hearing the CO set up the equipment for to let us out. But a thought hit me. I said, hold the fuck up. Hold up. He going to try that may I shit. <laughs> so I get dressed real quick. My cell all the way in the back. So I said, if I stick my head out and he, he in his boxes, then I'm just going to strip real quick and come out in my boxes. But if I, if I stick my head out and this motherfucker dress, I'm already dressed. So <laughs> my shit on, because I knew. I said, watch he try that shit. <clears throat> They opened up the cells. I stuck my head out, and sure enough, this motherfucker was dressed. He was trying to may I and twirl my shit. Nah, baby. <laughs> he came out fully dressed. Everybody else came out in any boxes. I'm putting my hand out. I'm like, come on, come on. Come on, my cell in the back. Your cell in the front. <clears throat> Make a long story short, he comes running to the back. I got my ratchet, but I'm playing with it because I'm so cocky, you know what I mean? I'm I'm shooting shit. I'm cocky with this shit, so I'm playing with this. I got a rug. I'm throwing my shit. I'm playing with this motherfucker, you know what I mean? He really swinging, swinging, boom. Police come down. They run. You know, they wrestling with him. He trying to, you know, save the razor, get it out, get away. I threw that shit at the police. The razor, I had threw that shit at the motherfuckers. I had so many of shit. It didn't even matter. I go in my cell. And guess what? I got a fucking cut on my leg. Like, I got a little cut on my leg. It wasn't a cut deep enough for me to have to get stitches. But what I did was, before I even get into that, I'm going to get back into that. Check this shit out. Um, I never saw JJ again face to face. I saw him one time in Kaksaki. I was in E block, long term, key block. He was in E block, long term. No, no, I was in F block, long term, key block. He was in E block, key block. But I was able to see him in the cage. But we didn't get to each other. I ended up leaving, going to Southport, whatever the case may be. He ended up going wherever he went. And boom. So I don't, this is in 1994. I don't see this motherfucker all the way until 2013, 14. That's 20 years later. I'm on here on that same bid. I'm on a whole new bid, but I'm I'm on a, I just got a reversal, right? I got about 11 years in at this time, but he got 20 years in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm they call me down to court. I'm in Auburn at the time. And then I go down to I go down to Auburn to um I I go back down to Rikers Island cuz I just got my reversal. And you know how downstate you always see a motherfucker. I remember giving the police my ID card 
And I turned around and this motherfucker standing right there. This is the first time I seen him face to face since then. You know what I mean? I put my hand on my mouth like I had a ratchet. Some was like, yo, man. Hold up, man. We was kids, my dude. We was kids. That shit ain't about nothing. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at him like, because I'm going to keep it real with you. I've been hearing about him over the years. Mind you, I knew him as JJ. My son Ro was like, yo, you don't know who Jay, Jay Diamonds is? Because I heard his name in something. I forgot what it was. He said, yeah, you know him. I said, I don't know nobody named Jay Diamond. He said, that's JJ. I said, get the fuck out of here. Whoa. I always wondered what happened to him. But all this time I was hearing about him, just didn't know that was him. You know what I'm saying? So, so me seeing him saying, yo, I wasn't trying to really buy that shit, but I didn't really have a ratchet in my mouth. But I know he know how I do. So he ain't going to take a chance if I go do some shit like this. You know what I'm saying? But... At the end of the day, we end up getting cuffed next to each other. So we talking, but I'm watching him the whole time. You know what I'm saying? We going down to Rikers Island. I'm going on my reversal. They put me in two upper. They put him in mod two. Now I'm in two upper with a whole, back in the days, two upper in the four building used to be an adolescent house. But now it's an adult house. Mad blood dudes is in that motherfucking house. I got a blicky on me. I got one, but I'm like, at the end of the day, I already know. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to do what I do, but I ain't Superman, but I'm going to do what the fuck I do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm listening to this. I hear this motherfucker from Mar 2. You can see two upper. I hear this motherfucker saying, yo, he talking to the homies that's in my house, his homies. And he like, he, he mentioned me. But he was like, yo, that's the brother, that's the bro, that's peoples, we go all the way back, make sure he good. But you know me, I'm still like, I'm still like, this motherfucker trying to rock me because he got to know I can hear him, even though he don't know what side of two up I'm on. But that's what I, and I'm listening out for colds and shit because I know some of them shits. I've been in prison a long time. So I'm, I'm, I know some of them colds. I'm like, the first wrong word I hear, I'm coming out swinging that thing. And I'm down here on a reversal, so I really wasn't looking now, looking for that type of action. But I wasn't going to let nothing happen to me. So, but I was on point, but that shit turned out to be sincere, yo. That shit turned out to be real sincere. I bumped it to son on a visit. We got mad tight again. So, and I'm going to reveal something. I went back to my cell with a cut on my leg, yo. He never knew this. Only two people know this, and one of them is dead. It's Papa Jock and Bree. When I went back to my cell, and I noticed I had a cut on my leg, it wasn't no deep cut. I ain't even need no stitches. I took the black tape off my ratchet and closed that shit with that. Shit kept, I just left it, fuck it. But that ain't the point. The point is, I got my scar in combat. Like you, you, you know what I mean? And, but he didn't even know he did it. In fact, he don't know he did it until he hear this shit. Or let's word get back to him. I didn't want, that shit couldn't be on my name. Like me losing it. Like I, I was, I was top gun. Like facts. Like I'm not supposed to lose. I'm not a, a gun. Even if it's just a little bullshit leg shot. Nah. So the narrative if I created or me, Bree and Papa Jock, I made a mistake and cut myself. Everybody went for that shit. Nobody questioned, not even him. I remember when we was gate banging in Kaksaki, gate on the gate, when I was in the, in, the, in the thing and he was in the cages and we gate banging out the window. He's like, yo, yeah, you cut yourself, not knowing that he the one that did it. I couldn't let that be known. Like, I'd rather take the hit for me accidentally cutting myself than to give him the accolade for cutting a motherfucker like me because he was just J.J. at the time. He wasn't J. Diamonds. Him, him got me, even though it's a bull, and I had a rug. I hit him first, but I hit him through the gate. He got me in combat. I didn't even tell him that in 2014. See, the reason why I ain't telling that before that is because, like I said, pride was in the way. I ain't admitting no defeat. That's really a defeat. Even though I ain't lose no sleep, I ain't was like, it was on to the next. I'm laughing and joking. But he shed my blood in combat. You know what I mean? And I couldn't admit that. So, 
Breed, Papa Jock, none of them never said nothing. Only us knew. In fact, we just put out that I accidentally cut myself. I accidentally scratched myself. You know what I mean? When I bumped into him in 2013, 14, I started to tell him then after I seen that everything was sincere. But the reason why I didn't is because, being honest, he had the numbers. He could have pushed the button on me at any time. I didn't want to reveal that, oh, yeah, you got because it would have made it seem like I'm just saying that now because why didn't I say that then? So I wanted him to still believe that I got my shit off, but he didn't get nothing off, even if I'm in the building with him and he got the numbers. I didn't want to make it seem like, yo, and maybe that's foolish pride on my behalf. You know what I mean? But I didn't want to give it to him then. Like, as far as, like, yo, son, you know that shit? And we talked about that shit a little bit. We ain't get into details, but he's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? But, um, like... Yo, that shit was never supposed to happen. I remember like, yo, son, you remember that leg shot that I, everybody thought that I did that myself by accident? You know you really did that, right? I couldn't bring myself to say that while he got the numbers. Because to me, in my mind, it would have seen. I know if a motherfucker told me that, I'm going to be like, you going to tell me that now? Because you I already told motherfuckers you good. Now you rubbing it in. I'm going to think you fronting because you ain't never tell me that before. So me telling, me revealing that now, I don't lose or gain anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, in fact, I'm admitting, in fact, I'll lose. Cause like, you've been fronting all this time about that shit. You know what I mean? But I gave my reasons. Either you accept it or you don't. But the difference between that story and the first two is, the first two is, the first one were happy in trouble. I don't know if they ever repaired their friendship. I doubt it. You know what I mean? Papa Jock and Benji, after they cut each other, I tried to, you know, but it didn't work. Papa Jock ended up being murdered later on down the line for unrelated circumstances. Unrelated, don't got nothing to do with Benji. Um, but me and... Jay Diamonds, we went from friends to foes and back to friends. You know what I mean? And that's, there's no better way to end this episode. You know what I mean? Because um, everything ain't got to end on a fucked up shit. And I remember my cousin, I didn't see Jay Diamonds since I've been home. Salute to him, man. And I heard he, you know, I didn't see him since I've been locked up, but he was in a club one day with my cousin and my cousin put me, he said, yo, somebody want to speak to you. And it was him, my cousin Brady Cash. It was him. And we spoke and shit, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I don't regret too much different shit, but that's one that I could say, damn, you know, but we was all wild adolescents. And shit happens. You know, I'm sure it's a lot of dudes that they think back to these times and they be like, damn, I wish I could have did this different. I wish I could have did that different. You know what I mean? Like in prison, especially in prison, it comes to a point where you look at everybody as a potential enemy. You can't never really get too close with nobody because you don't really know their true <clears throat> intentions unless you know them from the street. And even then... You know what I mean? You have to be careful. And um, so with that being said, oh, maybe next time I'll do a show called From Enemies to Friends. I got a um, couple of stories of that too. Real shit. And that should be just as entertaining, if not more, than this one. I wish I'd have thought of that first. But anyway, salute to everybody. I promise not to keep y'all waiting for the next one. Um, like I said, you know, for those that don't understand why I do this, I could easily say, well, don't listen to it, but I'm not even going to do that because um, I'm just going to say everything ain't for everybody. 
I know when the mob guys did it, not only did the people brace it, they 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 um they start naming themselves after them cats, you know. <laughs> you know, people might be like, oh, you know, but this jail, I mean, but those are our stories. If we wasn't drug dealers, we was in a can. We ain't have control of unions and shit like that. We black. They ain't allow it. So we only could go with what we got to talk about. And that's just what it is. So with that said, man, I'm going to end this one. You know what I mean? This episode is most definitely Brooklyn approved. T-Bone Blast on the checkout. Salute.